Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, Big Paul here today. I haven't done one of these in a while. Contest prep updates. I haven't done a training vlog. I'm going to go through my diet, my PEDs, my cardio plan, all that good stuff training for contest prep. I am 16 and a half weeks. Well, I guess 16 and a couple days out, 16 weeks and a couple days out from Masters Nationals, which is July 18th, if memory serves me correctly. Um, my plan this year is to do that show and then my backup show, if things don't go as planned, there will be North Americans, which is like four or five weeks after that. And we'll see how things go. I'm going to dig into all this and pull back the curtain and show you what I'm doing in just one second. <laughs> All right, so this is the start of prep. This is where I'm at right now. Fast at weight is 255. This is really the lightest I think I've ever been at the start of contest prep. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. And I'll be truthful with you after my show. I had a bunch of stuff going on, personal life. I got sick. I had the flu really bad. It turned into a respiratory infection. Um, I got married. I had a bunch of travel that I had to do, so... Essentially, just pulled back down to slightly above TRT. I guess a bodybuilding cruise for, I don't know, three and a half months, something like that. And I fired my cycle back up about four weeks ago, five weeks ago, something like that. And I've been titrating up into contest prep. I like to titrate up going into shows or going into cycles, sorry, because uh, it just, I find that I get less side effects when I titrate up. And then I work up to a peak dose and then just sort of stay there. Um, so facet weight right now is 255. Daytime weight is 262. My body composition is sort of weird right now. I feel like I'm flat and a little soft at the same time. I think this is the leanest I've been going into a, a prep. I don't know. I'm definitely not my biggest. But the odd thing is, is workouts even though I was on cruise I find this a lot of times when I go on cruise my strength goes up I don't know if it's just the reduction in toxicity or maybe I, I, I do sleep better when I'm on cruise but it's weird my body composition will kind of get crappy I get sort of skinny fat I like to call it but my strength increases it's it's the oddest damn thing but that's what I find when I go on cruise for a long period of time so my strength really is, I think, at an all-time high right now. Um, or at least since I my return to bodybuilding training, my strength has been through the roof, and training has been really good. Um, even on the lower doses. I, I mean, I'm not in the lower doses right now, but I just started escalating up about, I don't know, four or five weeks ago. So my height, people get very concerned about my height. I am six one and three quarters to be exact. That's what the doctor measured me at. So I'm just a hair under six two. Uh, blood pressure is 120 over 75. Fasted glucose is 95. I sleep. I sleep is pretty decent right now. I've been getting about seven to eight hours a, a night of sleep. Uh, running all the GH I'm running right now makes you sleep really well. Health right now, I feel pretty good. My, my shoulder hurts, but that's just an ongoing thing. I have a torn labrum and something going on with my biceps tendon in my shoulder, my left shoulder. It's screwed up. It needs surgery. I've been putting it off for over a year now. I'm going to keep kicking that can down the road as long as I possibly can. See what I can get away with. But I am somewhat limited on what I can do on that side. I really can't do any barbell presses anymore. And overhead pressing is, is sort of a challenge. So I have to be somewhat careful with that. Current progress picks is where I'm at right now at 16 weeks out. Body composition could be better, but it's it's is what it is. 
Everybody gets fascinated with my nipples, so I'm just going to talk about what's going on with my nipples right now. Yes, there is one that sticks out and there's one that doesn't look right. I have had multiple gyno surgeries. The left pec, this side over here, you can see how that nipple is different than the right pec. That I had a giant piece of gyno that just kept coming back. I had three surgeries on that pec to get rid of the gyno. And I finally just told the guy, I'm like, I want it all out of there. And what happened is my nipple collapsed on that side. So that's why it looks weird. And then what makes it look even weirder is my right nipple. There is a small piece of gyno underneath of that one, probably about the size of a marble that I need to go back in and get cleaned up at some point. When I get towards the end of contest prep, it usually sinks in and it looks tighter. It looks fine right now. It looks a little weird, but that'll clean up as I get deeper into contest prep. So for those of you bros that obsess over my nipples, why, why one looks weird and you know compared to the other, why they're asymmetrical, there you go. Now you know, mystery solved. Um, from the side, you can see I, I'm definitely carrying a little bit of fat in my waist and whatnot. Uh, that'll come off. Um, I'm not too worried about that. I usually lean up really quick. Where I carry my fat is in my back. I've got the back hair going full full bore right now. Yes, I will shave down at some point. I know somebody's going to say in the comments section, hey, Paul, why don't you shave down? Because I'm lazy and I will do it later on. All right, folks, I want to take a quick break from this episode to tell you about the new e-course that Kurt Havens and I have put together, The Scientific Principles of anabolics, and PEDs. This is the most comprehensive PED e-course ever put together with over 80 modules, including intros to PEDs, major steroid profiles, competitor off-season cycles, non-competitor cycles, contest prep cycles, HGH fundamentals, insulin fundamentals, side effect management, safer use concepts, fat loss agents, estrogen management, and advanced PED and hypertrophy science, it is the best course out there of its kind. Go check it out. Link is in the video description below. Current diet. This is the start of prep. This is what Justin starts me off when the, the sort of the way, I don't know how Justin's going to do it this year, but the way he did it last year, I think worked pretty well. We just sort of soft started prep at 16 weeks out, pulled down to one high day, just made a slight lowering in food and just a tiny little bit of cardio. And then around 12 weeks out, we really started pushing and we pushed from 12 to 4, and then at 4, we started pushing the food back up a little bit going into the show. So really, it only took me about 8 weeks just to get to pretty much stage lean. Last year, my DAXA scan going into the show, I should get one done now to see where I'm at. I'm guessing I'm probably like 12, 13% body fat. I don't know, maybe maybe more. But last year, I was weighed in at 239 on show day, and I got a DEXA scan done one week before the show, and I was 5.9% body fat at 239-ish, 238, something like that. I don't know, around that area of pounds. Well, let me go back. So my medium day, which is any training day that's besides a high day, we do one high day per week. My total macros right now, 370 grams of protein, uh, 425 grams of carbs, 47 grams of added fats for a total of 3,600 calories. If you count the trace fats that are in the chicken and protein that I eat, it's probably closer to 4,000 calories. I notice for me, when I get below 3,800 calories or so, thereabouts, I start losing weight. That's just where my metabolism is at. So uh, you can see here I have my meals broken down. It's just a lot of chicken and rice. I try to mix in a little bit of fruit. People ask if you can eat fruit on contest prep. I don't know where this notion came from that you can't lose body fat eating fruit. I have no idea. I was eating fruit all the way up to my show last year. So you can see here I have three pieces. Oh, actually, I have fruit with just about every meal. I, I enjoy fruit. I enjoy having fruit with my with my meals. It keeps me sane on contest prep. And I've never seen anybody get fat eating fruit. I, I don't know. High day, you do. I do one high day a week. It's generally Saturday, which is a leg day. Macros on that day are uh, 330 grams of protein. We do eat a little bit less protein because the carbohydrates are increased. Carbohydrates are protein sparing. It is not so much about protein sparing at this point. It's just it's hard to eat a thousand grams of carbs 
with that much protein in play. So when you push it up, you sort of have to play around with the numbers. Uh, and there's a cheat meal, optional cheat meal at the end of that day. Usually I don't take that cheat meal until I get a little deeper into prep when I'm getting depleted. For the first month or so, I like to be locked in and just eat regular food. I found that be more productive, but the total calories on that day are 5,700. And then my low day, which is my off day. I train six days a week, so I have one day off from the gym. Protein's 360 grams, uh, 300 grams of carbs, 60 grams of added fats for a total of 3,180 calories. Just to clarify on the added fats, people are like, why don't you count the trace fats in the meats? Basically because it's impossible. Like you, you have no idea how much fat is in the chicken, how much fat is really in the beef. It's not like this shit is made in a factory. And just like people, Animals have different body fat percentages. So what I try to do is eat as lean as I possibly can when it comes to the meat choices. So that way we take any variability out in the diet. So and then this is going to be constant. We're going to eat the same amount of protein through the whole diet. So counting the fat doesn't really matter that's in the, in the meats as long as I keep the same meat sources. So we count added fat, and the added fats usually come from EFAs, things like nuts, olive oil, avocados, flax oil, fish oil, things like that. Current PEDs. This is the part that everybody likes to hear about. And I'm gonna sure there's going to be some people that say, and I'm taking too much, whatever. I've never run this much before. This is the spiciest cycle I've ever done, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I've talked this over with some people that I trust, some guys that are at the pro level. And this is pretty typical. Um, you may want to believe that, not want to believe that, but it is true. So what I'm running right now, I'm doing 250 milligrams of testosterone a day, 200 milligrams of Primo a day to start off. I have titrated up to that over a six-week period of time. Estrogen management currently, I am doing a half a milligram of anastrozole every other day. Peptides, 15 units of GH. It's a bottle of generic GH a day and only insulin on the high day right now. So I'm only running insulin on the high day. No fat burners as of right now. That's pretty much it. The HGH, if I can remember to do it, I usually break it up in three doses on contest prep. On the off season, I just take the whole thing at night. Right now, it's, uh, you know, so it'd be five units in the morning, five units pre-workout, five units before bed. Current health supplements I am taking for glucose management, 1,500 milligrams of berberine per day, which is, the, I use this, the Suppressor Max product from First Detachment. General health, I take a whole food multivitamin two times a day, 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C, 5,000 I use of vitamin D for cardiovascular health. Three grams of fish oil per day, 2,000 milligrams of flax oil, CoQ10. Uh, for liver, nothing right now. I don't need it. My liver values are actually fine. Kidney, uh, I take the renal reset from first detachment, which the primary ingredient, ingredient is astragalus. For digestion, ox bile on high days, digestive enzymes, and psyllium husk at night. People always ask me about fiber. They don't see a ton of fiber in my diet. They don't see a ton of vegetables in there. Vegetables wreck my stomach if you have ibs you know what i'm talking about i usually try to get a greens powder in so with some psyllium husk mixed in with it at at night and i use that for that and, and then hopefully i'm getting what micronutrients i get from the vitamin i i love when people say you know macro or micronutrient deficient just take a goddamn vitamin pill or a greens powder, you get all the micronutrients you need. Really, the, the worry about not having more vegetables in the diet is fiber. So I supplement the fiber. Rx meds, right now I'm on 40 milligrams of telmosartan. Usually I end up having to drop that as the contest progresses. I My blood pressure tends to drop, sometimes gets too low. I've had moments where I felt like I was going to faint like halfway through contest prep, and I have to drop the telmosartan. Because my blood pressure gets low during contest prep. Training, I am doing a renaissance periodization style of training. Sort of my own. 
the way I have it set up right now, I used to do push pull legs. I have split the push workouts in half. One half of them is chest, one half is shoulders. And the reason I have done that is because I can't handle doing both in the same workout right now because my shoulder's creaky. So I've had to pull the volume down a little bit on my chest and shoulders just to keep my shoulder from getting grumpy. My rep scheme, I, I go close to mechanical failure. Usually when I when the form starts to break down, that's when I stop my sets. I don't go to absolute failure anymore. Remember, your job on contest prep, people talk about growing into shows. There's only been like eight bodybuilders in the entire history of bodybuilding that are you know, growing into shows. I'm not one of them. Um, you're not growing and adding muscle in a calorie deficit. Most people are not. So my goal right now is just to not lose muscle, maintain what I have. So it's pushing the lifting workouts is not required at this point i'm just going to get hurt so my rep scheme is 10 to 12 reps on what i consider compound movements which are all machines at this point i don't do any barbell movements and 15 to 20 reps on isolation movements somewhere between 10 to 20 sets per week per body part depending on the body part cardio right now starting off is 12 minutes of hit four times per week plans and thoughts diet adherence i'm just at the beginning so i got one day under my belt <laughs> Now, once I'm locked in, I'm locked in. I don't fuck up. I went my whole prep last year and had no deviations. I didn't deviate. I don't deviate. I don't understand why people deviate on contest prep. If you if you can't stay mentally strong through contest prep, you're not cut out to be a bodybuilder. I'm planning on two shows. Like I said, Masters Nationals, backup shows, North Americans at the end of August. And that's pretty much it, folks. That's where I'm at. This is where I'm starting. We'll see how things go. You never know with the stuff. Sometimes you have to make changes along the way. So this is where we're starting at. We'll see where it goes. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you have questions, if you think I'm an idiot, you want to tell me how bad my nipples look, put them all in the comment section below. Thank you folks for watching. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.